Okay, so one of the things I'm curious about is upcoming school year. You know, this is the, this is top of mind, I think, for anybody who's got one, two, ten, you know, it doesn't matter how many kids, if you have a grandchild, everyone's talking about it, everyone's thinking about it, given so much uncertainty and debate. As it relates to younger children and education and given the current environment, what trends are you seeing as it relates to, I think, the upcoming school year and, and schedules and childcare? Maybe talk to that for a few minutes, because I know that's something that everyone's talking about right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to take that one. I am digging through it myself for my um, incoming first grader, and um, he was already switching from his preschool Montessori into a public school environment, and, and now we have this added layer. So um, one thing I think that's very clear to me between my, you know, looking at my personal journey through this process and then working with our clients is everyone's situation is unique and um you know the the situation in different cities and states is, is all unique so there's i think the one thing that feels consistent across all of that is um just what you just said mark just the the uncertainty of it all that it's constantly changing um there's often conflicting um, ordinances and guidelines and requirements and the schools are trying to navigate all that and, and keep the families up to date but it's it's just this moving target makes it really hard to keep up with and plan for obviously kind of get a plan in place and then it all all changes so um i know we've heard a lot of different things on scheduling from from the schools um you know there's the block scheduling the alternating weeks the delayed starts combination approaches. I know our school has just announced a high blend. So it's like a high, it's, it's like a combination <laughs> approach. Um, so a, a lot of changes, but I think that what families seem to be really looking for now after um, getting a taste of, of the remote learning in the spring and, and some of this, the same uncertainty of whether school buildings were going to reopen or not is, is they're really just looking at different options to try to create um some predictable routine some consistency um you know i know everyone that's a parent can say that that's really important for kids especially young kids I and mean, i think it's important for all of us to, to have some sort of predictability and routine but but especially for kids so um a, a lot of families are really just um looking for for anything they can grasp onto to help fill that gap um create some um, some sort of a, as much of a, a normal sense for their kids as possible um, and, and, and for themselves, right? I mean, especially, you know, working parents, we have our, our own schedules that we're juggling. So we're, we're trying to have a plan that we can rely on and plan, plan around. So um, that would be the, the sort of the main thing that it seems like families are, are really looking toward. And um, of course, with, with the push toward limiting exposure and um, limiting the number of people that, um, that, that, that we are around and, and the schools trying to, to navigate options around that too. Um, people are, you know, it's, it's creating this gravitational pull toward in-home, you know, smaller group settings. Um, so I think that. Um, that's interesting. I mean, I think then that's definitely again, like like you. I'm in the middle of that myself, and my wife and I. What about as the kids get a little bit older, right? With high schools, kids coming home from college, not knowing what to do. Anything there that you're seeing or hearing with your clients, because that adds, I'm sure, an extra element of consideration and complication to the to the equation. Yeah, um, that's a really and uh, there's a whole other set of considerations there. Um, you know, we don't see it as much at home pay. The, the main thing that we're hearing on um, from older kids, especially college graduates, recent college graduates, and, and um, even um, students that have extra time in their schedule is, you know, they're a great asset for, or a great um, tool for these um, parents looking to fill care gaps. So a lot of, especially education majors, but across the board, you know, a lot of families, what they need is just, um, someone to keep their kids on track if they're doing virtual learning, um, remote learning through their schools. And um, so it, it's really kind of a, a facilitator role, kind of a, a blended nanny slash 
tutor role um, and if they're using their school's curriculum they don't necessarily need a teacher but they need someone that can really keep their kids engaged and keep them on track and so I, I have heard a lot of families talking about you know going to their local university and, and recruiting through that that avenue um, but but yeah the, the whole college challenges that's a whole other area I wouldn't say that we really see a lot of but um, I can say a lot of families that, that we interact with are looking toward those college students and recent graduates to see if they can um, hire them part-time to fill in some of their care gaps. That's interesting also because I know um, it sounds like parents are adapting. I've heard some interesting and exciting I think things too through this not that anybody wants to be in this environment but I'm hearing stories about different ways that parents are innovating like leveraging some of the technologies that are available to them through obviously some of the things you guys do, but a lot of things out there. Maybe share some of those stories because I think that's really important for the audience to hear is how parents are innovating because I think people will want to hear some of those things that are going on out there. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. And it piggybacks nicely off of the parents are really trying to piece together all the resources they have. And there, there is, there's a lot of new um, online educational content being pumped out that um, a lot of really good stuff out there. I think that's a whole other area that families are, you know, there's so many new things to navigate, but that's one of them, um, you know, with Zoom and um, different engagement tools out there, you know, there were a lot of virtual summer camps and um, I've heard a lot about Zoom play dates and kids, I mean, I've even heard like kids getting together for a daily Zoom dance party, you know, just something to keep them seeing other kids on the screen. Um, that's been popular. I, I actually, myself personally um use zoom quite a bit this summer for my kids um we have a nanny share and and the, the other little boy in the share was was gone for the summer but he would zoom in and um it worked pretty well um he was um we, we have kind of like a we put it together last spring and it's worked really well but it's it's basically a preschool pod and um so we have a, a nanny slash preschool teacher that does a lot of stuff and and she was able to actually bridge that with a three and a half year old my younger son's three and a half and so this this little boy in the share would zoom in every day and he could see you know the um be, she'd be in our little living room area and doing the activities so um that was really neat to see and it kept them connected and, and we're actually doing it. We're out of town on vacation now in Colorado and we're zooming in um, back to Austin to just kind of keep, keep them connected. So it's, it's, that's pretty cool. You know, all that, that kind of stuff. And the kids are really, um, you know, they're, they're growing up in all of this. And so they're, they're learning how to engage through, through Zoom. Like we're all kind of learning as adults to do in our, in our jobs. 